welcome to the School of Prayer at Naturally Champions. And we're excited to have you join us. Shall we pray as we kick off right away? Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your help, for clarity, for revelation, for understanding as we pursue this topic of prayer, as we search into your word, as we lean in into your word. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your help. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, today I want to talk about a journey that we went through as a family. And as we talk about this journey in a session that I have entitled Patiently Waiting, I want to encourage somebody who feels like God has forgotten them. They've engaged in the business of prayer and it looked like they are not making any progress. They've heard the testimony of others and left asking, what about me, Lord? It may even be you. I pray that this will minister to you and encourage you along the journey. So press on and press in with me. You know, you know, I we the Bible says in Hebrews chapter six, verse eleven to twelve, we want each of you to prove that you are not working hard. You are working hard. Let me take that again. Hebrews six, eleven to twelve. We want each of you to prove that you are working hard so that you will remain confident until the end. Then instead of being lazy, you will imitate those who are receiving the promises through faith and patience. I like that aspect. So he, he says, I, want, I don't want you to get lazy. I don't want you to be lethargic. I want you to keep working hard. And I want you to remain confident until the end. In other words, remaining in faith, remaining confident, pressing into God when things are hard is a lot of hard work. But God says, I don't want you to be lazy. I want you to push on. I want you to, uh, to be hard. I want you to pursue. As you do, I want you to imitate those who, through faith and patience, have received the promise. In other words, there is need for faith and patience. There's need for endurance. There's need for pushing through. There's need for hard work. There's need to stay the course. There's need to keep pushing. So I want to encourage you today. You know, I, I, I recall uh, my, my wife and I, he stayed in a European country for almost nine years. And in 98, we moved back to Zimbabwe after a prolonged stay. And we settled in our new home in Marondera. Four years later, our situation changed. We had been working in Harare. The children were, stay, were stay, studying in Harare as well, but we were staying in Marondera. That is almost 75 kilometers um, between the two towns. And we recently had transferred uh, our church membership to uh, Celebration Church from the church where we were. And we started believing God for uh, a house because we suddenly began having more and more responsibilities within the church that required us to, to travel late or to stay in a very long time. So we felt that since we are leaving our home mainly because of the kingdom work, then God would give us a bigger and better homestead. We prayed and we believed God for four years or for a better property in Harare so that we could, it could facilitate our ability to serve God. And every year we believed that it was our breakthrough year. Whatever word of the year was given, we, we, we interpreted it in the light of our dream and we were seeing it happening. And we held on to scriptures like Mark chapter 10, verses 29 to 30, where Jesus answered and said to, uh, to them, Very I say to you, there is no man that has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel's sake, but he shall receive a hundredfold in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. So the, we, the, the, that scripture spoke to us. Really, we, when, when we settled in Marondela, we, we had no plan to move into Arara. I remember that even when we were building, people were saying, why don't you just uh, set up your property in, in Arara? We said, no, 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 we love Marondela. It's quiet, it's a nice city, it's a nice little town, it's comfortable, it doesn't have hustle, it's laid back and we're excited. So we really loved that place. It was quiet, it was like a getaway home after the hustle and bustle of 
of uh, the capital city, he would go to home and just relax and chill. So really leaving that house to us was really a sacrifice. And so we felt that God, this scripture spoke to us to say, we were leaving this house for the kingdom. Therefore, we would receive a hundredfold, a better house. So we go to the scriptures. We fasted. We gave. We prayed. But nothing. We even tried fleecing God. But to no avail. We hunted for houses to buy to no avail. You see, those who remember the phases that Zimbabwe went through, in 2006, you, you, you recall that the economy was now on a downward spiral. Fuel was difficult to get. And things were difficult. It was now more expensive and difficult to maintain a lifestyle of traveling to Harare every day, seven days a week. And so we finally made a decision to move into a rental property in Harare. This was a tough decision as it seemed like our faith had taken a hit. This was a temporary arrangement as a friend leased us a property that he was working on, that he was developing. So this move to Harare in our mind was a temporary stopover. We had moved from living in our own spacious home with large wild spaces to living in a rented property during a construction period. The owner was converting the property into cluster homes, so there was no privacy. There was lots of dust, but we were, we were happy. We were thankful to God and to the owner of the property who had leased it to us in a very favorable terms. But this was not our dream. This is not what we pray for. This is not what we are believing God for. And I remember when we were in, in 2007, when we had just been told by Pastor Tom to say, we want you to go and pioneer celebration in Church Blower. We, I tried using that as to blackmail God. And I said, Lord, as a proof of your calling us to Blower, you uh, provide the house that we need. If you want me to take up this assignment, then provide the house that we have been praying for. The heavens remained silent. No answer. You simply ignored my request. So the search was still on. But the assignment to blow oil still had to be accepted. We were desperately searching for any kind of property to buy. Disappointingly, during the process, there were so many false leads and false starts. Thrice we almost signed the agreements of sale on, a, on compromised properties, but the deals fell through. I laugh when I look back. Some of the things we were willing to accept. But at that stage, I was no longer interested in the dream property that I had believed for for four years. I was now saying, Lord, anything over my head that I own is better than nothing. There are times when you get so desperate that you are willing to settle for anything. That's the stage where we were at. That's the struggle we were going through. So we were moving from a place where we, we, we were in faith and then at some point we felt like we are in unbelief. We, we, I could identify with that gentleman who came to Jesus with his son and say, Lord, heal my, heal my son. And the, the, the Lord said, if thou canst believe, you'll be healed. And the man said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. You know, there are seasons and times in life when you're in under so much pressure that you move in and out of faith and belief. You're desperate. So Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold on firmly to the hope that we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. But there was no evidence for me during this period of our desperation that God would keep his promise. So this temporal stopover made me realize that there are moments in the journey of faith when detours and temporal laybys will happen. Here are a few biblical examples. Abraham waited for the seed of promise and he detoured into Ishmael, unfortunately. Joseph was promised royalty and leadership and he had a detour 
in Egypt through the pit, slavery, and the prison. Moses was promised to be the deliverer, but waited 40 years in the wilderness, forgotten, uh, forsaken, speak his fellowship and his communication with his wild winds and sands and animals. David was promised the throne, but he had to pass through the wilderness, hunted like a wild animal. Pursued by a rogue king while he waited for the kingship. Paul was called to ministry, but he had to be shipped back to Tarsus because he was an occupational hazard and he'd be forgotten for almost 14 years. Almost as if God's call had failed. But I want you to know, child of God, I want you to know, champion, you are not forgotten. Even though God promised the Messiah, he waited for thousands of years from Genesis 3, 15, when he made that promise, till Calvary. So the tours and temporal labors will happen. But don't give up. Three years after moving into Harare, and six years after we started believing for a house, during one of my, one day during those moments of desperation, my wife asked if I'd been to Faith's room lately. Faith is our daughter. Having been married a while, I knew it was an instruction to check on a room. When I walked into that room, what I saw jolted me out of my desperation and lethargy. Right there on your wardrobe door was a picture of a beautiful, luxurious white home with neatly handwritten words, our dream house, in 2009. She had just gone through the Pacific Institution, Institute's visualization program. And Faith put out there a picture of her dream house. And Faith's vision reignited the dream. I said to my wife, it is time. Let's stretch our faith again. We remember that Hebrews 10, 35 to 36 says, do not lose courage, then because it brings with it a great reward. You need to be patient in order to do the will of God and receive what he promises. Do not lose courage because it brings a great reward. We moved our eyes from the disappointment, from the frustration, and we understood we needed patience. So we first after having done the will of God to pursue until we receive what he had promised So, this was an interesting phase. Faith began to rise again. The search began again in earnest and fervent prayer was being raised. I told God that he could not afford to let my daughter's faith down. If he let her down, I knew it would destroy her confidence in God. If God failed to come through. So we prayed with the agents. We prayed with the desperation. We, st <clears throat> we approached the estate agents. Actively sought for the realization of the dream. And we believed God. We stretched ourselves. By this time my wife knew almost every property on sale in Harare. At this time the construction of, our, uh, 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 of the landed property where we were was completed. And the cluster homes were bought. And other people moved in. And this increased the pressure. Now we were, we, were, we were comfortable staying in this place as long as it was a, a construction site. We had all the spaces to ourselves. Now there is restriction of space, restriction on the family, restriction on our dogs, restriction and there's noisy and there are other people to have to deal with. And there's all these dynamics. And suddenly the pressure mounts. But interestingly, in June 2009, in an unexpected way, we finally struck a deal to acquire a home, 
But my wife went in to look at this property. She came back and she said, this is it. She showed me the pictures very similar to the picture that Faith had on her hand, wardrobe door. We struck the deal. We structured the financing. We bought the property. After some hurried innovations, this was June 2009, when we struck that deal. After some hurried renovations, we moved in in September 2009. What a journey. After many disappointments, false leads, false illusions. God finally came through. The dream came to pass. After many tears, much fasting, and abundant prayer. After the business of prayer, after many sessions of spiritual warfare, supplications, the dream finally materialized. The process gave me perspective and taught me some principles which I want to share with you today in the hope that this will encourage you on your journey. You see, this is a journey. It's a battle. Pursue it. Don't give up. Lean in onto God. Hebrews 10, 35 to 36 says this. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, or the New Living Translation puts it, patient endurance. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Do not cast away your confidence. Do not abandon sheep. Do not lose hope. There is a great reward. There is a great recompense of reward when you hold on, when you pursue with God. It actually says here you have need of patience. God knew that time, life will happen and it will impress us in. That we have need of patient endurance. That after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. Hallelujah. So here are seven principles I want to share with you today. Principle number one. Very simple. We need patience to receive the fulfillment of God's promises. You see, it says, after you've done the will of God, you have need of patience that you may receive the promise. You see, between doing God's will and your harvest is a thing called time. This is the place where patience is required. After you have sown your seed and your harvest time, there is a thing called time. This is the place where patience is needed. When you have prayed your prayer, you have sought God, you have pressed into God, you have put in your application. When you have done that, there will be time before the harvest time. And that's the place of patience. That's the place of endurance. You see, God promises to heal. God promises to prosper. God promises to provide. But He does not say when. He does not commit to time. That's why we need to be patient and wait. We need to wait for His timing. We need to wait for the fullness of time. Even when Jesus came, the Bible says in Galatians 4 verse 4, when the fullness of time had come, Jesus came. So there is a fullness of time. So you need to wait. You need to pay the price and wait. So we need patience to receive the promise of God. You need patience. You see, patience is defined as the quality of enduring pain, hardship, and annoyance with calmness. Think about the quality, the ability, the willingness to endure pain, to endure hardship, to endure annoyance with calmness, with pause. That's patience. And that's what we need. You don't need to be irritable. You don't need to be temperamental. Another definition says the, the calm willingness to tolerate delay. Remember we said there is a delay between having done the will of God and the manifestation of the promise. And that calm willingness to tolerate delay is called patience. We have need of patience to receive the promise of God. 
Another way to define patience is it's a form of perseverance and forbearance that allows us to respond to frustrating circumstances with grace and self-control. I love that. A form of perseverance and forbearance that allows us to respond to frustrating circumstances, to delays, to hindrances with grace and self-control. Hallelujah. Let's try another definition of patience. It's waiting long and expectantly for something. Not giving up on faith, holding on and pressing in. And the final definition is, patience is endurance, steadfastness, calmness of spirit, long-spiritedness during trying times. Let's try that again. Endurance, steadfastness, calmness of spirit, long-spiritedness during trying times. So brethren, we have a need of patience. When we have done the will of God for us to receive the fulfillment of the promise. Principle number two. Whereas God lives in eternity, he works in time. And all God's generals are trained and natured in that space, in that place called time. So God is to step out of eternity into time. And so what we do in that place called time determines our harvest. You see, between the promise of God and the intervention of God is that space, that place I told you is called time. And how you handle yourself, how you behave, how you conduct yourself during that phase called time. Do you remember some people talk about having been in prison, they they say they did time. That place of waiting anxiously is almost like a, jail, a prison sentence. It's a waiting period. There's anxiety. But how you handle yourself during that time determines your harvest. Moses received the call and waited. Noah gave, received the instruction to build an ark and waited. David Having received the call, he had to wait. Joseph had to patiently endure contrary evidence. Paul patiently waited for God's timing. It seems to me there is always a period of waiting between God's call and God's commissioning, between God's promise and his fulfillment. During that period of waiting, be careful. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you believe. Be careful what you set your mind on. And during that period of time, you may also have some false illusions of grandeur, self-illusions of glamour. You may have mirages and you think you, you, you got the promise and you didn't. See, what may look like the fulfillment of the promise may just be training ground. It may just be a mirage. But remember, God lives in eternity, but he works in time. He will step into time and meet you at your point of need. Principle number three. Faith and patience are both required in order to inherit the promise. You need to mix faith and patience. Or let me put it differently, faith is patience. I'll say that again. Faith is patient. It is willing to wait for the promise of God. Listen to Hebrews 6, 12 to 15. That you may not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Do not be slothful, but be followers, be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So to inherit the promises of God, you need faith and patience. 
It goes on saying, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself saying, surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He had to patiently endure after God had made a promise, because God swore by himself. God cannot lie. You know, I believe that faith without patience leads to frustration. While patience without faith is folly. So we have overemphasized faith at the expense of patience and we harvested foolishness. Many people have made foolish and painful decisions with disastrous consequences because they would not be patient. Hold on patiently, child of God. Hold on, help is on the way. I'm reminded of a songwriter who saying, I don't mind waiting upon the Lord. I don't mind waiting. Even though it's painful, I don't mind waiting. See, there's need of endurance and patience between the promise and the fulfillment. You may be tempted or discouraged along the way, but hold on, help is on the way. It is worth the wait. When I look back at the property that we got and I compare with the different other properties that we considered in desperation, I can only say it was worth the wait. So you need patience and faith working together for the fulfillment of the promise of God. Hallelujah. Principle number four. I have discovered that lack of patience leads to stupidity, which manifests itself in acts of desperation. You see, when you lack patience, you will act irrationally and you will act desperately. Abraham's impatience led to the birth of Ishmael and the resultant consequences. I've seen numerous single believers who because of impatience got into ungodly relationships in an effort to fast track marriage since they felt time was not on their side. And most of them have paid a heavy price for their impatience. Listen, child of God. Do not try to do God's homework. Your job is to believe and act, then wait patiently. God is faithful. You will come through. I hope these principles are helping you. I hope I'm speaking to somebody. I hope it's tearing again in you a sense of hope, purpose. In pursuing God. Principle number five. Patiently waiting for God and enduring the process called time allows us to mature and grow in character. Because God's aim is character development, not just the blessings. God is not just seeking our blessing. Yes, he wants us blessed. He wants everything to go well with us. But he, God is allowing you to go through that process because that process is maturing you. That process is developing character. That process is a character development process. God is nurturing you. God is molding you. God is forming you. God is giving you endurance. God is giving you capacity to withstand. He is building your endurance muscles. James 1 verses 3 and 4 says this. For when your faith is tested, your endurance or your patience is a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Ha <laughs> ha I love that. Let me, let, let me give it, let me Give you James 1, 3 to 4 again. 
For when your faith is tested, your endurance, your patience is a chance to grow. When your faith is tested, your endurance, your patience is a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Hallelujah. I have discovered that during that process of time, God is working in and on you. He is more interested in your character development than in your harvest. So I encourage you to cooperate with God. I encourage you to hold on. Whatever it takes, do not cut corners. Endure the weight. It is worth it at last. So press in, child of God. Don't give up. Don't be desperate. Principle number six. Patience is a barometer of our faith and trust in God. Patience holds on to God's integrity and faithfulness. You see, the way to tell whether you have faith is whether you have patience, whether you have that calm endurance, whether you can wait with grace. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. You see, patience says, Lord, I trust you to keep your promise. I hold tightly to hope because, because I hold on to this hope because I know my patience is a barometer of my faith. It's an indicator that I trust you. I believe you to come through. So Hebrews 10, 23, one more time. Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Listen to Romans 15, verses 4 and 5. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. They give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises. May God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other, each with the attitude of Christ Jesus toward the other. The scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises. And may the God of hope who gives patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other. So allow the scriptures to encourage you and to strengthen you while you wait. Stay in the scripture. Meditate on the word of God. Stay in the word and meditate thereon. So when you do, your help is on the way. I often say, if you are willing to wait long, you won't wait too long. Say that again. If you are willing to wait, you won't wait long. That's the power of patience. The final principle, principle number seven. God's patience should neither be taken for granted nor be confused with his approval endorsement of or indifference to our sin but it's an opportunity to allow us to repent so when God is patient even with some things that you are doing which are wrong don't assume that is indifference but rather see God's patience God himself is patient. He does not require of us what he has not done. God is patient. Romans 2 verse 4 says, Don't you realize how kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Or don't you care? Can't you see how kind he has been in giving you time to turn from your sin? Oh, listen to another. I'm just emphasizing the fact that God himself is patient. 2 Peter 3 9. 
The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise to return. As some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to perish. So he is giving more time to everyone to repent. So God is patient. He is asking you to take on his nature, to manifest his character, the fruit of the spirit, that you are patient because he is patient with you. He has been patient with you. He has given you leeway. He has given you room. He has not judged you prematurely. God is patient. That's why he expects us to be patient. So child of God, these are the principles we are talking about. These principles will help you as you patiently wait. And I want to remind you, my brethren, and to encourage you to engage in the business of prayer. There's a reward in the business of prayer. However, it, remind, it remains a lot of hard work. Patience is required for the fulfillment of God's promises. Patience raises us to maturity of character. God's patience allows you to walk towards repentance. So may you see the fruit of your labors and be satisfied. And your prayers are making a difference. Let me just, as I close, just walk you through those seven principles. Again, it's worth the wait. Principle number one. We said we need patience to receive the fulfillment of God's promises. You cannot receive the promises without patience. You have need of patience. Principle number two. We said whereas God lives in eternity, he works in time. And he works within that space of time. And then what you do within that space called time will determine the nature of your harvest. Principle number three, faith and patience are like Siamese twins. They are both required in order for you to inherit the promise. We said faith without patience leads to frustration, while patience without faith is foolishness. Principle number four, you said the lack of patience leads to stupidity which manifests in irrational decisions and acts of desperation. The lack of patience leads to stupidity, which manifests in irrational decisions and acts of desperation. That's why we need patience, to avoid irrational decisions, to avoid acts of desperation. Principle number five, wait patiently for God. Or put it differently, patiently waiting for God and enduring the process called time allows us to mature and grow in character. You see, that place called time between doing the will of God and the manifestation of your promise is a place where God is developing your character. So work with God. Cooperate with God. Remember James 1, 3 to 4 says, For when your faith is tested, your impatient endurance is a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Isn't that powerful? Incredible promise of God. So it's worth the wait. Principle number six. Patience is a barometer of our faith and trust in God. You see, Hebrews 10.23 says, Do not waver 
Hold tightly to the hope that you have. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Patience is saying, Lord, I trust you to keep your promise. It's a powerful principle. And the final principle, principle number seven, is that God is not asking you to do what he doesn't do. God himself is patient with you. He is calling you into what he is doing. God is not hypocritical. But we should not take his patience for granted. Because his patience is to give you room to repent and come into fellowship with him. So my my beloved brethren, We need to learn to patiently wait. Because when we pray, we stay in faith. We mix faith with the word. Faith and patience. And when we do that, we will see the fruit of our labors and we will be satisfied. Our prayers will make a difference. So I say keep pressing on. Keep pressing in. May the Lord grant you the patience and the perseverance to press on into his promise. Because God is faithful. So I want to pray as we close this session. Father, I pray for your people. You know what they are going through. You know where they are. You know what they believe you for. I pray, my God, that through the comfort of the scriptures, you encourage them, you strengthen them, you comfort them, that they may hold on to the promise of God. Develop them in faith and let them hold on and see the fulfillment of the promise of God. Father, I thank you that you are faithful and you are doing that which you promised to do for your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to give an opportunity to somebody. You know you are not walking right with God. You may be a believer who is not walking right with God. Or you may be an unbeliever who is not walking right with God. Remember, I said, don't abuse the patience of God. God does not judge you quickly. Romans 2, 4 says, don't you realize how kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Or don't you care? Can't you see how kind he has been in giving you time to turn from your sin? So God has not judged you. God has not dealt harshly with you all along because he was giving you an opportunity to repent and turn away from your sin and come to Jesus. Say, Lord, forgive me. Make, make me a child of God. If you're a believer who has been walking in sin, you don't see the, 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 the delay in the judgment of God as if it's an indulgence. God is just saying, let me give him one more time. Let me give you one more time. Now I call you in. Will you repent and get right with God? So if you want to get right with God, I want to pray with you. So just join me as we pray. Say, Father God, I know I have failed you. I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn to you as I turn away from that sin. Will you forgive me? Will you cleanse me? Will you give me another chance? I want to live for you. Certain I reject you with all that's yours. I choose to believe on Jesus. So Jesus, I call you into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. 
I believe you died on the cross. Shed your blood on the cross. Was buried. And you rose again on the third day. And now you are seated on the right hand of God the Father as a living Savior. Save me from my sin. Save me from myself. Save me from my wickedness. Save me from the devil's hands. And make me a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for hearing me, for changing me, and for transforming me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, God has heard you. He has forgiven you. He has made you a child of God. There's celebration in heaven because somebody has come back home. If you're a believer was walking in sin, if you turned away from that sin, commit to walk in holiness and purity. The Lord will help you. So those who pray to pray this prayer, You have now become a child of God. He loves you. He wants to help you. We want to encourage you to fellowship, to study the Word of God. But more importantly, we ask you to reach out to us at this WhatsApp number and we'll be able to minister to you and connect with you so that we can help you further. So you can reach us at this number, plus two seven. Six seven four one two seven seven four zero. I repeat the WhatsApp number again. Plus two seven six seven four one two seven seven four zero. Just reach out to us on WhatsApp and say, I prayed that prayer during the Nurturing Champions prayer school. And we'll reach out and we'll help you. So friends and family, it's been a pleasure journeying with you on this journey. And we pray God's blessing as you walk into the fullness of his promise. May God show himself strong on your behalf. This is Nature and Champions tuning out. God bless. Shalom.